We have the all new Creality K1C here and I'm super excited about it. But the big question is, did they fix it? That's what we're gonna look at and if this is a top printer right now. So a little backstory on this printer, this is the K1C, the all new Creality printer they just came out with. In its past life, it was the Creality K1. The problem with the K1 was, it was overall kind of a little bit messy. There's three generations of the K1. This is technically the fourth, if you wanna look at it that way. The first one had like extruder issues and a bunch of other stuff. It was just a little bit rushed to market. The second one I think was decent, but there was still room for improvement. And I think the third one was relatively solid. That seems to be the general consensus of all that. And then this one, they added a few more bells and whistles, and this is essentially the K1 2.0. And they also came out with this little guy. It's like its little brother. So when you first look at this printer, it looks just like the third generation K1. But then you go to open it, and the first thing you notice is they fixed the door. You can fling it open pretty good and it's not gonna shatter. I also think they added some sort of film to this, so if it does break, it's not gonna just shatter into a million pieces on your floor. Also coming in here a little closer, this is different on the K1C as well. I'm not sure if this adds any sort of rigidity or anything, but it does look nice. The plate still does look pretty thin, which I think is the biggest downfall on the K1 Max, is just that giant thin plate and it just doesn't hold flatness the best. Also, they added smaller motors to help with VFAs and such like that, because I think they just overshot the motor size in the last one. And then there's also a new hot end. I did do a live unboxing of this printer. It didn't go the best. It was my first time doing a live unboxing, and I found out that my Wi-Fi in the shop is not good enough to do a live stream. So for now on, I'll do pre-recorded videos of all that. But this machine did not come with an extra hot end. And the new hot end is a proprietary hot end to Creality. So you can't just go buy it anywhere. The past hot end was just kind of like a generic hot end where a bunch of different people made that hot end, making it easy to get. Another thing is this little wiper job back here. So this is a nozzle cleaner and it works quite well. I've had no issues for it. I run the K1 profile in Orca and it still uses this how it should. But the issue with this is proprietary. You can't just go buy any PEI sheet off Amazon because it doesn't have this little thing. And then diving in a little deeper, this new lid is great. Again, they had this on the third generation K1. This is much needed. Um, to me, this feels like a Band-Aid. I really wish they just would have made this whole machine three inches taller and kept the glass plate on top. Um, this has two magnets. I have had it knock this lid like, and it goes falling off, scares the crap out of you. So they should add the other magnets, but the real answer is just this, this just needs to be taller. But I'm assuming it was a tooling thing. They already invested a bunch of money into this frame and all this. They just didn't want to reinvent the entire printer and just probably save some money. That's my guess, I don't know. But they did route these wires out the back, which is way nicer than they had it. This is also raised up some and doesn't grind on all this. Let's go check out the K1 Max. On the K1 Max, I had to print this little riser here. This stuff all just rides on this chain. This was squished way down, and that's a great thing that they fixed in the K1C and the third generation K1. So there is a few things different from the K1C and the third generation K1. I'm not gonna go super in depth in all those because there's people on YouTube that are way smarter than me and have way more knowledge on like the science and why they did all that. So we're just gonna go into the next step and check out some other things about this printer. So I do have the second generation K1 Max, and overall I think that's a great printer. My biggest complaints on that printer are all this stuff crammed in the top, which they did fix, and hopefully they come out with the K1C Max, and they do the same thing. My second and main issue is the bed leveling. It's just that big giant plate. It's not very thick, and it's just very inconsistent. If you watch my last video, I do some tests on that. You can shim them, there's people that have other ways to get the bed flat. I need to shim them, I just haven't done that yet. But the way I view these reviews that I do is I'm judging this printer on how I got it. I shouldn't have to do a bunch of stuff to this printer to make it print properly. I have been printing with this. I don't, I'll look how many hours I have into it, but this printer has been far better on the first layer. I'll show you the test I did and we'll jump into all that. All right, let's see what we have for print hours on this thing. Uh, about, there we go. Total time, three days, 21 hours. I don't know if that's total time or total print time or what that is, but that's what this is reading out here. Almost four days. So essentially what I did was just make a big square and it just essentially made a first layer on most of the surface. 
Then here you can see the first one. It doesn't look bad. A little bit of high spot there. You can see the back, there wasn't quite enough fusion. But like overall, it's, it's not the worst. And then here's the one that I did after the heat soak and let it all recalibrate. Too much squish up here. I think if I would have raised the Z height a tiny bit, this would have looked better. The back does look better, as you can see through it. But overall, it's not the worst. And now we'll hop into Orca to show you my bed mesh. I've been running the K1 profile with no problems. And we head over here into device and scroll down and it shows your bed mesh. So it's not all twisted and warped, but it does kind of look like a ski slope. So if I just add one of them half millimeter shims or so to the back, it should level it out drastically. I just wish Creality would give you adjustment knobs. I don't know why they make us go through all this hassle because it's a known issue. But this does look way better than my K1 Max bed mesh, but again, it's a way smaller bed. And what that entails is you take out these little screws, you 3D print a little shim out of ASA or ABS or something heat resistant, put it under, under there, redo the bed mesh and see how it looks. So in my case, I would add a shim underneath these two screws here and hopefully we'd be in business. So I've been throwing a lot of stuff at this printer. I may be a little late to the party. Uh, you've probably already seen several videos on this, but I really wanted to put time into this printer before I reviewed it. Uh, unboxings are a little different, but I wanted to give an honest like opinion after putting a bunch of hours through this thing. So the first thing is K1C, the carbon fiber filaments. That's, that's also another complaint. I wish they would have called it something else. The K1C is just too close in resemblance to the bamboo X1C. Carbon, it's just, call it the K2 or something. I don't know, but I don't know. That's just a complaint I have. It can print carbon fiber filament and other fibrous filaments, and it has that hardened steel nozzle to allow you to do that. Which is great that you have a better nozzle, but is the carbon fiber thing just hype? Is that marketing? I don't know enough about that filament to make that like claim. I don't think it's that much stronger based on a couple of videos I've watched. Again, not an expert in filaments, but is it a marketing thing? I just, I don't know, don't know enough about it. And I want to hear from you guys. Is the carbon fiber filament like the next latest and greatest thing? I don't know, but I'll show you my prints and let's take a look at how they look. Okay, so this is what we've been using. They sent me this with the printer. I used, I don't know, most of the roll. It's a little more expensive, $25 to $30 seems to be the price of carbon fiber PLA. So it's definitely worth a try. I think you should definitely try it if your printer has the ability or if you get this printer here. So I've printed, you know, I printed a lot of things with it. I don't have them all. I either sold them or gave them away. But this is like the first thing I printed. First layer, not the best, but this this side of it looks beautiful. And you can see it just prints beautifully. SD card holder, but great looking prints. I have no complaint about how good the, like the quality and how just well it prints is just wonderful. But again, it's a fibrous filament, so it's gonna look a little better naturally. That one has a very nice first layer. The only issue on this print as you can see here, I should have maybe slowed it down on the overhangs. I ran no supports. But overall, I'm not disappointed in any way with this print. Printed these cat Batman helmets for my cats, and they absolutely loved them. Not really, but they do look really good. So let's see how these supports come off. Overall, pretty easy, no complaints. I then printed this Darth Vader I found on printables and he turned out wonderful. Look at that slant and he stuck just fine. Okay, then we have, I got this file off printables, not my design, beautiful file. I'll probably give this away on our uh, Patreon. Not something I'm gonna sell. But this is PLA Plus from Sunlu. Beautiful print. Again, no complaints here. Little weirdness down here in the overhangs. First layer is decent. But again, look at that. No complaints. Then the little pedestal thing. First layer looks good. 
Beautiful print. He sits down there like that. Then I went ahead and threw some more tricky filaments at it. This is silk PLA. And these supports came off a little too easy. So I'd have to actually adjust that height, but overall looks good. Yes, I actually have that in here. It's a G-Tech PLA silk. And now onto the tricky stuff. So I'm doing a video on this right now. I'm working on it, printing all these balls to find the best material that bounces. But uh, the sports were a nightmare. Not the printer's fault, it's my fault. I just painted it on there. But there's like a lattice on the inside of this webbing or like inside of these holes. So the support actually went in there and like stuck to it. So that's my fault, but it looks good. Then I printed these red boots. This is TPU 98. Printed beautifully. I thought my dog would wear these, but I was wrong. Look at that. That first layer is not the best. That first layer is pretty good. So I hardly even tweaked the profiles. These are just stock profiles in Orca. Um, I guess speaking of Orca, I, I'm not a fan of the Creality, Creality print software. It's just not for me. I didn't like it. It gave me troubles. Some people like it. That's great. I switched to Orca and never looked back. Again, personal preference. Try it out. You don't like it. Orca's great. It has the K1 profile in there. I run the K1 profile with the K1C printer. No issues. Everyone complains about the filament thing on the back. They do offer the file now to where you can attach it to the side. You just print it yourself, throw it on the side, whatever, not a big deal. I've just been running these off the side of my printers and this works great because I have all my printers against the wall and I just don't want to reach around and deal with all that. So these dryers are wonderful. They came out with this new dryer here. I think it complements the printer nicely. This is a good looking filament dryer. My only complaint is the display could be a little more touch friendly. You gotta tap it a few times to get it to go. But you just select your filament, it sets the temperature automatically, you put it to how many hours you want it to dry, and it just goes. Especially with the TPU, you, I printed the TPU out of this and fed it through and I had no problems. But you really gotta keep that TPU dry. It works great, I've had no issues. It keeps stuff dry and I've run pretty much everything right out of it into the back, no problems. So to conclude this video, would I recommend this printer? Yes, I think this is a great printer. It's treated me well. Creality is known to have a little bit of a quality control issue, so there's a chance you get a dud, but overall, this, this thing's been treating me great. I have no real complaints about it, but again, the, the bed's a little off, but it makes up for it enough to not really matter. I think this is a good printer for five, six hundred dollars and I think it's a top contender right now. If you can get a smoking deal on a third generation K1, I'd probably buy that over this just to save that extra money because people are gonna be selling their printers and buying this just because it's brand new. But if you're paying new price for it, I would go ahead and just buy the K1C. And I think this is great too. I think it complements it nicely. And if you're gonna run difficult filaments, I mean, I recommend you have a dryer on hand anyway, because there's been a few times where I've got damp spools. Now it's just kind of a habit for me to dry them before I print if I have the time. So overall, I think this is a great printer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys in the next one.